Good morning and welcome to Tracy Tin United Methodist Church worship this morning. I do have a, one announcement that I want to make. Uh, the first Sunday in November, we fall back, so change your clock. But it's also uh, All Saints Day, in which we will name those who have passed in the last year. We'll ring a bell and light a candle. So if you want a loved one to be remembered, uh, email us or post it on the uh, Tracyton uh, Facebook so that we can get your name, so we can name the people that you love. Now let's begin our worship service, and today our liturgist is Sally. Good morning. Let us pray. Almighty, loving God, we feel your presence, and we are blessed. There is no distance too great or space too small that keeps you from washing over us with your grace. We feel that grace as it enters our heart's doorway through your word. There are a lot of loud noises that inundate our lives. Politics, media, social media are all full of rampant unkindnesses. They wear us down and crush us from within. But your gentle whisper is there when we listen. Thanking you feels like less than enough, but it is what we have to give you. Thank you, dear Lord, for every moment of our lives. Thank you for this beautiful world and help us to protect it. Thank you for all your people and help us to serve them. Hear our hearts sing out of your majesty and glory. In love we pray through your Son. Amen. The prayer of illumination is, Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. This morning, our reader will be Dennis. Good morning. Good morning again. Our reading is out of Exodus 33, 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, and I your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, and I your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked for. You have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory. I pray, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and proclaim before you the name of the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Word of the Lord. Psalms 96. 1 through 9 and 10 through 13. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. 
for all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. <clears throat> ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him and all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with the truth. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. Paul, Sabanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and the labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we may not, we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Word of the Lord. The glory of Patre. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? And they answered, The emperor. Then he said to them, Give therefore the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went their own way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, as your word opens up to us, may, we, may our hearts be renewed and may our minds be renewed and refreshed. We pray this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. In the Old Testament reading, the Psalms, and even in the New Testament, there was uh, language about idol and idol worship and what constitutes an idol. So this morning I want to talk about more than a symbol, a sign that works. Now I think for the most part, in my view, 
this particular passage has been one of the most misunderstood because it's almost as if it's a, a justification for paying taxes. Now I'm not a for or against, it's not my point. What Jesus was trying to show, number one, give me a coin that's a symbol. It has no meaning other than the weight of the coin. But the fact that Caesar's bust was, or head was on it is a symbol uh, that points beyond that coin to something more important, and that is the whole structure of the Roman Empire. And what Jesus was simply saying, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, he's just simply saying that that is a symbol, but it's not reality. And that's what that's what I don't think we get. So let's let's unpack that a little bit. So a symbol is pointing to something beyond itself, such as a coin. A sign, on the other hand, is a message. So the message of that coin is the, the authority and the power of the entire Roman Empire. That's the message. The symbol points beyond itself to that sign. So a sign is uh, uh, giving a message. Now what's an idol? An idol is when you make the symbol equal to the reality, that becomes an idol. And so in one sense he's saying the way in which you worship at the emperor is like an idol because there's no reality. It doesn't point to a reality. The reality is God. So render unto Caesar, which is Caesar, which is absolutely in one sense, nothing. Because you render everything to God. Because that symbol, Jesus, who is the symbol, he is also the sign that gives the message, points beyond himself to a reality, and that reality is God. No, don't, you don't have to believe me, but let's take a look at Scripture. John 1, verses 1 through 11. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the symbol that points beyond itself to reality is in fact God. He was in the beginning with God, all things came through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being is in Him was life, and the light was the light of the people. And the light shines in darkness, but the darkness didn't, didn't understand it. And then, in verse 14, which is the crux, and the Word, that Word that participates in God, is reality, becomes flesh. Now that word flesh is important because it, it just doesn't mean uh, embodying a body. It, it means he enters into the sin, flesh means sin principle. He enters into the human condition. He, he enters into our existence as a savior who will re deliver us from the sin principle. That's the point. So he lived, and the word became flesh, flesh, and he lived among us. Now that word lived among us comes from a Greek word that actually means tabernacled. He tabernacled. What's a tabernacle? It's a tent. He, made, he pitched his tent and he's among us. He's with us. Just like the children of Israel when they were out in the wilderness and wandering, they, had to, they built a tent so that they could worship God. Uh, and then when the temple was destroyed in the uh, seven, uh, seven, uh, year 70, the, there, there was no temple left. And so synagogues then were built as a symbol, a sign of God's presence with us. He lives among us, tabernacle, he tents among us. And then, going back to the dispersion or the time, now think about this for a moment. Your temple has been taken away from you. In one sense, your church has been taken away from you. The building, this tabernacle, this temple, because of COVID-19, we live in isolation. We're not permitted to gather a big gathering in the sanctuary. I would venture to say that most of you that are watching this morning haven't been in this sanctuary since last March. You're kind of like in exile. 
But, the, but what, what was happening with the children of Israel, because their temple was gone and they were dispersed, they were in exile, they built synagogues saying, it, because the temple's not there doesn't mean God is not with you. Because you can't come to the sanctuary doesn't mean that God is not with you. Because Jesus has built a tent. He tab tabernacled among us. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, we read that last week, the leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs. These signs. The message of Jesus is that he is with us. He is in us. He has not abandoned us. Even if we can't gather in the sanctuary, even if you're feeling abandoned, even if you're feeling isolated, God is saying through Jesus, I have tabernacled among you, even in your homes, even in the streets, even in the world, I have made a home with you. You don't have to come to this building to, to experience God. You can experience God right where you are. And the day will come, I promise you, that we will gather back in this place. We will be able to come back together. But in this meanwhile, in this period that we are in, know this, Jesus has tabernacled among you. He has built his tent right where you are and is with you. He's a sign. He's a symbol. He's a symbol that points beyond himself to God, but he's also giving you a message. And the message is the message of love, the message of presence, the message of power, and the message of healing. He is with us, even while we're in this period of exile. And then John 2 says this. Jesus did this, the first of his signs. He turned water into wine. That was the first of his signs in, in the Cain of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed. And then, a little bit later on, the Jews said to him, what sign can you show us for doing these things? And Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. So you have 46 years in building this building and Jesus said, destroy this temple. They, they're thinking this building, destroy this building. He's not talking about that. He's talking about his, the temple of his body. So we have to shift our thinking from the building to our bodies as where the presence of God exists. And therefore, if the presence of God is within us, then wherever we are, where two or three are gathered, he says, I am there with you. So regardless, if you can't come to the church during this period of time, doesn't mean that God is not with you. He is with you. He has tabernacled himself within you. Your body now has become the place of the tabernacle. Your body now has become the place of the tent where Jesus dwells among his people. We are the temple of the Spirit. We, you and I, are the temple. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God's presence is not in the temple, but in your hearts while we are in exile, waiting for our return. Now there's a kind of a paradox here. The temple is a place where God is, and humans are close to God, However, the temple is not God. The coin with the inscription of the emperor is not God. The coin that has the inscription of the emperor is not God. It is a symbol, and the message of that sign, or the, the sign is the power and authority of the Roman Empire. The message that Jesus is he is the presence of God in bodily form, and he inhabits each person that calls upon his name. God is intimately involved in humanity, but God is other than the temple. So we can say, yeah, Jesus is in my heart, but I'm not God, but Jesus is in my heart and I'm close to God, but I can't confuse the two. I can't make myself out to be God. We can't make the building out to be God. God is in the building, close to us, but it's not the building. God is in your heart, close to God, but you are not God. And that's the paradox. 
Jesus is, in, Jesus is the human manifestation of God who points beyond himself. So what do we do as a temple of the Holy Spirit? Just exactly what Jesus did. He points beyond himself. He never once in the New Testament points to himself. He points to his Heavenly Father. He points beyond himself, the reality beyond himself, that we are able to participate in because he becomes the way in which we can have this relationship with God. He's in the temple, he's in your body, but your temple is not God. God and humans come together and the sign that the, that message, the message it gives, is God's presence, God's healing, and forgiveness, empowerment in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you not know that your body, your body, your human body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? And in 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that you are God's temple, that God's spirit dwells within you? Now, what are the, what's the difference between these two scriptures? One is, you personally are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We collectively, as a body of Christ, collectively, God inhabits that. So it's both personal and it's social. It's both personal piety and social ethics. He's calling us to that kind of relationship. Each of us is a sign of God's presence in the world. So let me ask you this question. You know that commercial, I think of an American Express commercial, what's in your wallet today? What's in your body today? And, moreover, the commercial says, don't leave home without it. What's in your body today? And don't leave home without it. Don't forget to take it with you no matter where you go. You are the message of love. You are what the world is desperately craving for to experience that kind of love. You are the Bible that most people don't ever read. You are an expression of God's love. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we, ex and we express that love to the message. So the sign, so a symbol points beyond itself. We're not, we're not the reality, we're pointing beyond ourselves. We're witnessing to something else. And the sign is the message. And a sign is only as good as the message it gives. A sign is only as good as the message it gives. Amen. This morning, as we prepare for Holy Communion, we uh, have the opportunity to come and confess our sins before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, in deep humbleness, I reach out to you for forgiveness, for your forgiveness that I have not earned, but is by your grace alone. I know that there is only one way that I can do better at serving you, and that is by breaking my own will and truly listening to your will for me. Help me, Lord, for I want to please you. Help me to be a vessel of your love and your grace. Fill me to overflowing that I may share your glory with all. Through your precious Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. Let us repent, let us change our hearts and our minds and acknowledge that we are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit is within us. And we turn to God who loves us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Let us pray. God of power and glory, we come to your altar this morning, offering our gifts, praying for your presence in a world that is hurting and divided. We live in a world that desperately needs to glimpse your presence and your glory. More than just our gifts of money, we pray our lives might be a window into your love and compassion. 
We pray your light might shine through us to the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. Indeed, it's good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to Almighty God. You created the heavens and the earth, and you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus, to uh, inhabit us, to be with us, to be in us, as you promised, to be with your people always. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus. He showed no partiality. He treated all with respect as he showed them the path to you. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from sin and death, and made a covenant with us by water and the Spirit. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks to you. He blessed the bread and gave the bread to his disciples and said, take all of you, eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same manner, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He blessed the cup and gave the cup to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the sign of the new covenant, the shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living gift in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them become for us the body of Christ that we might become the body of Christ to the world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, in your church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, 
We who are many are one body, for we all partake of one loaf. The bread that we break, is it not the sharing in the body of Christ? And the cup over which we give thanks, is it not the sharing in the cup of salvation? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to his table. Lord, we are not worthy to receive you. Only say the word and we shall be healed. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. This is the time if you're at home gathered since we cannot share bread here in the sanctuary but you can take your bread and your juice or your wine and simply dip the bread in your cup and behold the body of Christ and the cup of salvation given to you and to me. Let us pray. Through this act of symbol and sign, by drinking and consuming your body and blood, we acknowledge the message that you give that we are one with you, one with each other. And so, eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us. May we be a living example of what it means to be a Christian. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have several prayer requests this morning. A prayer request to pray for uh, a brother and a sister they live together in California, and he has been exposed to COVID-19, so we pray for their welfare, their well-being. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A person requests prayers as she is not feeling well, and so we pray for comfort for this person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A person in the church has a severe pain in her shoulder. She has a CT scan schedule. Please pray for uh, pain relief. So we pray that, God, you lift that pain from her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A mother is asking for prayers for daughters having dental procedure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A father is asking for prayers for his younger son. You know that situation, so we lift that son up to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And prayers for the healing of a person uh, in this church that needs a, a, touching, a, a touch of healing. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you've heard the prayers of your people, the cry of their hearts, and for those who are not expressing their prayers in this form, we also pray for them and ask your presence, your peace, your healing to touch each person. So send forth your blessing upon your people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord from my heart to your heart until we meet again. May there be God's peace. Amen. <laughs> I forgot to mention there is an afterglow at 11 o'clock. You're all welcome to participate. I sent an email out with that link. Uh, if you don't have that link, uh, put it on Facebook and we'll make sure you get that link so you can be a part of the uh, afterglow Zoom meeting at 11 o'clock. Thank you.